All right. Is this Mr. Dill? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Dill, uh, good evening and thank you so much for your patience. I know this has been an adventure. Uh, we have been going nonstop since nine o'clock. Uh, we took about a 20 minute lunch break kind of quick because we most of us were in a position that we didn't need longer than that, but we were trying to do the best we could to move through this calendar as quickly as we could. Um, we have reached your case and are ready to proceed uh, on position 32, 23PO4270. So I'm gonna ask if you would, please raise your right hand for me. Do you swear that any statements you make to the court today will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes, sir. All right, the person that you filed against, Ms. Reed, uh, are they a DeKalb County resident to the best of your knowledge? Oh, uh, yes, I, I filed a little late because I, I work every day. And okay, but you were, you were living together at the time you filed at the end of April, is that correct? Yes. All right. In your petition, you detail an incident that took place um, in March of this year. Tell me what happened. Um, well, Toriana started getting to the point where she pulling out knives on me and stuff like that. And, you know, she, she's um, being very aggressive, and I try to get her to calm down and talk or whatever. You know, going through my phone, cussing, yelling out loud and stuff. You know, I was cussing too, you know what I'm saying? But it was the incident she was trying to stab me and I, I got my CDLs. So I was fed up with it. And, you know, you get in trouble with your CDLs, you can, you know, probably like lose them or whatever. So I had no choice but to call the police. I called before she was arrested and she had a warrant because she left out of the house while the police, when the police came. She left out of the house and they went looking for her, but they couldn't find her. I was fighting her, trying to get the knife off in, in her position. She was on top of me. So we rolled on the floor from the bed and I put my weight on her body and she said she couldn't breathe. So I eventually grabbed the, the weapon off her and I just ran to the rental car. I had a rental car at the time, sat in the rental car, made the call. She left out, dealt with head somewhere and the police came. Well. The March situation, it was the same type of situation where we was talking to yeah, the I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but Ms. Reed just logged back on. Okay. I'm going to bring her in. Yeah. Thankfully, we'll only be backtracking briefly. You want me to, you want me to wait for a second? Yeah, I'm going to give a little bit of an intro speech, and we got to make sure that her video and audio work. Okay. Um, it looks like her video. Let's see if her audio works. Recording in progress. Okay, she's okay. Good. She's good. All right, Miss Reed, were you able to see and hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, so we are pretty much just at the outset of your hearing. We were just barely into it. Um, so we'll backtrack a small amount, but this is how it's going to go. Uh, each of you is filed against the other, and so the order that we will move through these hearings is going to be. It's a little bit unusual compared to a conventional case. I'm gonna hear from Mr. Dill uh, and hear his testimony. You'll have the opportunity to ask him any questions or really suggest to me questions you think I need to ask uh, as far as the claims that he's making. You'll have the opportunity to testify about what you've experienced both in response to him and um, you know, your own testimony that hasn't been discussed yet. He'll have a chance to suggest questions and then a chance to provide rebuttal testimony as well in case you cover anything that he didn't speak on during his part. Uh, so that is essentially going to be how we proceed. The standard of proof in protective orders is uh, more likely than not, essentially, preponderance of the evidence is the legal term for it. And we have to determine that acts of family violence have been committed and that this order may help prevent acts of family violence from occurring in the future. And so that is essentially the standard to which uh, we will be held. So, uh, Mr. Reed, uh, since we're back in, um, you've got a prompt to unmute there. Um, and since Ms. Reed has just joined us, um, Mr. Dill, do you swear any statements you make in this matter will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. All right. So uh, you were beginning to describe two incidents from February and March uh, that resulted in arrest warrants that were issued against Miss Reed. So we'll try to discuss those one at a time. Talk me through the incident as it happened in February. 
Hey, the incident that happened in February. Well, I have I have the videos. There's so many videos I have of of it occur, uh, occurring. But what happened February was uh, she was attacking me with the knife. She hopped on top of the bed. She was on top of me, and I had to wrestle with her to get the knife off. When I wrestled with her, we fell on the on the floor. When we fell, I was able to take the knife out of her hand to where I proceeded to walk to the to the rental car. I sat in the rental car, called the police. She left. The police came. I showed them the video of her trying to stab me. And they went looking for her. They didn't find her at all. So they gave me a case number and everything. And I guess they put a warrant out on her arrest. I didn't know if they had a warrant on her arrest or not. So around March, January, February, March, around March, it was another incident to where she pulled the knife out on me again. It was in the living room. I was telling her to chill out, calm down. She was like walking up on me. She had the knife in her hand, telling me she was going to stab me. And I told her, I was like, I was just going to walk outside and take a break. Walk outside, took a walk, called the police. The police came. They seen the video. They was finna let her go until they ran her name and she had uh, a warrant on, you know, on her name. So she was arrested for that situation. And um, Judge, I also have the videos if you would like to see the videos of those. So where are the videos? Well, I can play it on my phone through my TV and show you like that. Um, the, we the, can try the, that. And we see. can have we got one in the case too. I can. I can oh, we already you already sent one in, sir. Yeah, it was kind of short. The ones that I sent in that was got more lengthier. They were sent as mail drop. So they say you guys couldn't get them as. There's a cap on how big the files can be. The server won't yeah. take them. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's look at the one. We'll have Madam Clerk share it for us, and we will see um, how much we can see, and then we'll figure out where to go from there. Why are you gonna stab me for? Move. Bro. Sign that fucking contract. Move. I'm not trying to get stabbed. It's like on a short video that I could I could see. I sent more, but they they said they don't take take them in files. All right. So, um, what contract is being discussed? I I, I don't even I don't even remember. I know it wasn't that serious for her to pull a knife out on me. Try to stab me with it. What kind of knife was it? It was like a scissor knife, a double, double sided scissor knife. All right. Um, let's see. And so she she was arrested and then bonded out sometime later. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, Before we figure out if we're gonna how we're gonna go with the videos, um, Miss Reed, uh, do you have questions you want to go ahead and ask this witness about what we've handled so far? Yes, um, because I contacted DeKalb County way before this even transpired, back in November and December, when Mister Deal put his hands on. Hang on, this is the uh, we got to break this down into stages. This is the part where there are questions for him. After that is the part where you can make your own statements. I have no questions. So, so no questions for him. Just want to make your statement. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so please raise your right hand and I'll swear you in. Do you swear any statements you make to the court today will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. All right. You can put your hand down. What would you like to tell us today? Okay. The reason why I went ahead and got the restraining order, I have an out-of-state number. Okay. I contacted DeKalb County back in November when Mr. Deal first put his hands on me. I sent my pictures in and the text messages of him up trying to apologize. So it just kept progressing on and on. The third time I was fed up, he hit me in the face with his gun. So I told him, this is it. I called DeKalb County, they didn't show up again. He kept telling me, nobody's gonna save you. Nobody's gonna have your side. Nobody's gonna believe you. So. When we went to Florida after Christmas, 
it just kept progressing, kept progressing. I was getting accused of cheating, all of this. We were fighting and arguing every other day. Now, up until the point now, I didn't actually physically stab him. I just wanted to grab something to defend myself because he always would run up on me and physically hit me. So I, I told him, you hit me again, I'm going to stab you. I'm not going to lie about it. That's what I told him. I never physically touched him with a knife. Anytime I grabbed a knife, that's when he wanted to start recording me. That's how I got in trouble. This last time I called the officers, I was calling them every other day. The officers finally let Mr. Deal know you can't keep putting your hands on this lady and she can't defend herself. Her grabbing a knife is in a self-defense. Me going to jail, he co-signed for me to get out, to come back here to argue with me, to run me. Like I told Willie Deal, he has no control over me. If you don't wanna be with me, leave me alone. But the whole being physical with me, no. So I went ahead and got put the restraining order in because I, I'm not getting any results back. And it's not fair. He he hits me first and then he gets away with it. His excuse was his CDL. Don't call the police on him because of his CDL license. No, I deserve better. I des I, I don't put my hands on him. I treat him well. I'm done. All right. So you filed your petition around the 24th of April, for instance, yes. which I think was a Monday. And you're talking about some stuff that happened around the 18th of April, which was about a week before. No, no, sir. This started, the physical abuse from Mr. Deal started with him back in November. Right. All the way up until the day they removed him. I called the police that night. Uh, he put his hands on me before. He hit me in the back of my head while I was sitting on the bed. That's why I called the police on him. Okay, so let me ask this. Were you the person that filled out your petition or did you work with an agency like WRC to have assistance with that? No, I filled it out. Okay. <laughs> My apologies. I'm going to be coughing a lot while we finish up. All right. So in your petition, you said on or about April 18th, 2023, respondent committed the following acts, hit knees and spit in my face, pointing gun in my face, and said he'll shot me. Yes. So when did that happen? That was the same night I put um, the petition in. Because the officers came out and said, Ms. Reed, go ahead and fill out this and get it in. Because it is getting to the point I was calling them every two days. Okay. So this was about a month after you bonded out of jail. Yes. Okay. And so for since you bonded out of jail, you've been residing back at that same location? Yes. And he has too? Yes. I have the recordings of everything. I'm telling my mom she could come back here. We'll work on it. And then as soon as something doesn't go his way, he's trying to threaten me with the, the no contact with him, which I told him I wouldn't even done it if he was going to do, do all of this. Right. Well, hang hang on. Miss Reed, is there anything else you want to tell us before we turn to his portion to suggest questions? No. All right, Mr. Reed, uh, Mr. Dill, excuse me. Do you have any questions that you think yes. I should ask Miss Reed during this portion of the case? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, if if I have done all those things, why haven't you called the police when you know that? When, you know, you say you feel like your life was in danger. I'm sure I surely would have been arrested. Why haven't you called the police and let the she's, police know? She's already addressed that in her answer by by saying that you would invoke your CDL as a as a reason not to to risk you getting in trouble. Do you have but, any other but, questions? Yeah. Um, but isn't that kind of like isn't that kind of crazy? Like if you feel like your life is in danger. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll still well, go these back. These need to be factual questions. What you're asking is really an argumentative question. So let me ask this. Where are you right now, Mr. Dill? Um, I'm currently on, on Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay. Are, are you at the home that you two share or no? No, no, sir. Okay. Miss Reed, where are you? I'm at the home that we share. 
Okay. The sheriff removed him from here. When he was served with his order? Yes. Okay. Where were you between the time that that order was issued? I was here with him. We had got into an altercation that same night, and I called him back out here. We both were here. Okay. So from March to now, you have continued to reside at that location? Yes, sir. And so, Mr. Dill, where have you been staying during this time? Well, sir, I got, um, I end up been staying with my brother or whatever, trying to, you know, get my own apartment at this moment. I haven't been around her and, you know, don't want to be around her, sir. She can keep the spot and all that, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, which is, you know, you know. You'd rather move on is what you're saying. Yes, sir. I just I just wanted to show you that's why I waited this long for the hearing because I have evidence, you know, spite on what anybody has to say. All right. Do you still have personal belongings that are at that location that need to be retrieved? Oh um, no, sir. I, some some of my personal belongings was thrown away. My TV was broken. And it says in the TPO that my 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 stuff shouldn't be damaged or thrown away. I have a picture of that as well. All right. Um, TV he's referring to, I have a video of him confessing that it got broke while we were fighting. So I can send that in. I'm not trying to, sorry, I'm not trying to argue. With you. So here's, here's the situation. This is, yeah, it's six o'clock at night. We've been doing this since nine. I'm trying to keep my wits about me. Things happen all day in every single case that absolutely continue to confound me. What is baffling to me in this case, Miss Reed, you got arrested on two separate cases. You went in front of a judge, it probably wasn't me, there are like 30 of us, but you would have gone in front of a judge and been given a bond, right? Yes, correct. And then your bond would have had conditions attached to it, right? Right which would have told you to stay away from him, but I had nowhere else to go. He contacted my mom. She put him on three-way on the phone. This is where driving me nuts because I've been beating myself up about this whole situation. It didn't have to get this far. I understand I stood in front of the judge, but I was talking to my mom trying to get away from this man and he contacted her, promised me when I got out, everything will be fine. If he was so done with me and I was so horrible to him, he wouldn't co-sign my bond. I let everybody oh. know I was willing to sit in jail because of him. I understand everything. I know what I did wrong and I hate that I even trusted him to come back to this apartment. I know what I said and I, what I signed for my bond. This is messing up my life and he knows he is in the wrong, but it is okay. This too shall come to pass. I understand what I did wrong. I messed up and came back to this apartment because I trusted in him yet again. And now it's getting to this point and I'm, I'm trying to do right. I called the police, I'm tired. He's right. getting away with everything. I called before right. him when he first put his hands on me and I still got let down. Now my life is getting messed up. It's All not right, so Miss Reed, whose name is on the lease at that location? I'm assuming there's a lease. Our name is on the lease. All right. Has either of you tried to get a name taken off the lease? No. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get my name taken off. I've I've been calling the apartments. They haven't been answering the phone. And I, I feel like we we we're we're grown. We both of us 31 years old. And you you, you know in Maybe in Illinois, you can get away with stuff like that. But I know for a fact that Cal County do not play violence. Right, so here's here's a few things going on. Miss Reed, he's saying he's willing to. I've been talking leave. to the leasing office. Ma'am, I was just getting started, though. So he has indicated that he's willing to move out and move on. I guess to him, his move out is complete. And, and he wishes to move on. So I know you were about to tell me about the leasing office. Are they amenable to? They have video, all the videos of Mr. Dill 
everything. I'm asking about that. Is the leasing office amenable to removing him from the lease? To sign the paperwork over ever since this has been happening. We've been waiting on him. I bet call. I can't go over there. So I can give you the direct. I can email the direct number to the owners of the apartment. We we got the dial cranked up to about a nine right now. I need it at about a six. So because I'm I'm struggling to get the answers without without things just kind of snowballing. So Mr. Dill. Yes, uh, how big is this apartment complex? Um, the apartment complex is not that big. It's, 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 it's big, but it's not that big. So, All right. Are you saying that you don't think you can go to the leasing office based on the existence of the protective order? Yes, it says um, 100 feet away and the leasing office like right across from our old apartment. So that's why I haven't been over there, but they also have my Gmail too. They were looking out to contact me. They could have, you know, Hit me up on my Gmail like they always have. And you say you've not been able to reach them by phone? No, sir, I have not. I've been calling them. They usually answer, but they haven't been answering. All right. Um, give me one moment. I'm looking at. Because I was paying bills over there, but I, you know, since the TPO is like, I paid my last month rent before the TPO came. I paid my half, you know, because I feel like I'm not going to pay all the bills. If, you know, I'm arguing with somebody, you know, they should have their half. And after that, you know, it's blessed me to, like, pay a bill if you're not staying there. You know what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> I have a question. All right. Um, like I say, Judge, I got the videos of each uh, occasion of whatever had happened. I called the police, let them know many a times. One situation had been happened where I didn't call the police. <clears throat> So here's here's the situation. I think each of you would agree that you'd rather be free and clear of the other one. Yes, you, you have both been clear about that. And what is unusual about this case, I'll even use the word special, is that you're in agreement about where you want that to be or not be. Mr. Dill, you want to be somewhere else. Miss yes. Reed, you want to be where you are without him. Um, so what we have is a a strong foundation upon which we can build this house um here's what i'm going to do for a few reasons uh, and i'll try to explain some of this as i'm explaining what it is um and i'm making my notes so give me just a moment All right. Uh, I have not heard any mention of marriage or kids. Am I am I correct that there is no marriage and there have never been kids as far no as between the kids. two of you? Okay. Um, there are different boxes we have to fill out or consider if those things are in place and they're not. So this is going to sound confusing, but I think when I'm done saying what I'm going to say, please bear with me and listen because I think it's a solution that is going to work for everybody. Technically, I am ruling in favor of Mr. Dill in this way. He already has a special conditions bond in his favor that directs the respondent not to have contact with her. However, my ruling is going to be this. I'm granting a 30-day protective order. 
it will expire June 15th. Uh, the possession of the property will go to Miss Reed. The petitioner is agreeing by his own representation in court that he wishes to relinquish any present or future temporary or permanent claim to that property. Um, and the petitioner shall be allowed to go to the leasing office to sign the papers that Miss Reed says are already waiting for him to sign. And that can be done without any violation of a court order. It can also be done without any contact with Miss Reed. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Dill, Miss Reed has made it clear that she wishes to move on from you as much as you claim you wish to move on from her. Uh, understand that to some extent, these court orders are still a two-way street and that your actions, to the extent they invite or incite responses from her, can put you in legal danger. And it's a lot more serious than just the CDL, although I know people work real hard to get that in the first place. Um, and so based on what the parties have said about where things are right now, there's not any reason for anybody to have any contact from this point on, from the point that we sign off. Um, and what I will say, Miss Reed, for you, um, is that even though right now it feels like what I'm saying is no, um, this, I hope that you can see that this is structured in a way for you to continue to, to be in the place you want to be, to live the future that you want to live. And I also want to make sure that you know that if something else happens, then you add it to your petition and you come right back. And we will get you in front of a judge and hear what needs to be heard. Uh, and we will start this process anew uh, for consideration. And so these are stressful and challenging cases. It's especially stressful and challenging when we are more than nine hours into our court session. And so especially to the extent that that's true, I want to thank you both for, for bearing with us through a very long day of court. I know that is a confusing ruling in some respects, or a strange one at least. Uh, but I hope the explanation I've given makes sense and that each of you understands why I'm choosing to do what we're doing today uh, to resolve these two matters. So with all of that said, um, Ms. Reed, we're going to just get an email address from you before you actually we have your email address from the other case. We don't need to get any information from you. Um, for today, each party will be clear to log off and my order that, uh, that explains my ruling will be put to writing and on file later this week.